Hi everybody and welcome to an Excite React. What can I say about Mike Pony and her crew? I mean, I I love what it's doing. I think they are creative, that it is good directing, that they give us really good stories, interesting stories at all. Uh they are really good voice actor uh, actress and actors and well, they keep surprising me with their singing. I have to say that some part when they were singing where I kind of cringe. Um, not because they, they got, uh, they're not good singers. Uh, this is what I wanted to hear. This is what I wanted to hear. In my face indeed and plus I just think that there are some people so yeah recently I've seen a trailer of, of a project they wanted to do called Pinky Tales and actually just before I started to record I've seen that she posted the first episode which I'm gonna react to in this video so uh, but while watching the trailer I was like hey you know what why not uh, try to react to other stuff that they made so yeah, today I'm gonna react to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven video made by my Pie Pony and everyone else that I work on that. So the first one is gonna be uh, my own worst enemy. It's an MLP comic dub. The second one too is is called season four finale alternate ending. The third one is now it's my time. Uh, Princess Trixie's parcel anniversary special. The third, uh, the fourth one is called Apple Family F Floats and Apple Bloom. Yeah, kind of weird, a weird uh, name, but anyway. Uh, the fifth one is called Grammar is Magic. The sixth one is The Great and Powerful Trixie Song. And the last one, well, the, the, the project that they, they, they just released, Pinky Tails, Applejack, and The Beanstalk. So... Yeah, let's talk with my own worst enemy. Um, yeah, I'll be trying to, uh, on, on the expectations because I don't really have much besides saying, well, hear, hearing more uh, awesome voice acting. So, yeah, like Pinkie Pie said, enough to chat time with Candy. Let's start this video in 3, 2, 1. Now, we want sugar free cupcakes. No, silly! We want the real cupcakes with real sugar! Not fake! Real! <laughs> but Mom said it will all go straight to our hips! We can't! We want the hips! We want the sugar! We want the cupcakes! Freaking cupcakes! We want sugar! Bad hips! No! We want sugar free! <laughs> she has a lot of imagination. <laughs> uh, the, the, the worst is that I already seen that comic so I, I never seen the, with the voice acting which was pretty awesome oh man I should react more to uh, to uh, MLP comics man there's so many good ones <laughs> but that was short, but that was really good. Again, I love the voice acting. So freaking cute and so, so in character. So, yeah, I, I'm gonna pre be pretty short on commentary with short video, but hey. Uh, let's move on to the season 4 finale alternate ending. Hmm. I wonder what's gonna happen. No freaking idea, but let's discover it! So let's start this video on 3, 2, 1. Invading the castle is easy enough. All I need now is the magic of three princesses to cement this victory. Hmm. What in the. Hello! Oh! It will be easier to skin you all alive. <laughs> oh, right. This is a kid's show. In that case, I'll just vlog you off camera. Uh, I'll imprison the base forever? Seriously? 
I guess I'll just spray the three of you in wheat and cold water. Oh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> Forget it. I can't do anything to a baby. I'm done here. <laughs> Keep your kingdom. I don't even want it. But we were gonna bake a cake together. I hate cake. <laughs> oh. I came here as fast as I could. You said you had urgent news regarding T-Rex return? We wanted to bake a cake, but <laughs> you left. To help us reach the cupboards. <laughs> so adorable. <laughs> that was so adorable. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. Oh, in the. Uh... The voice acting definitely give an uh, inch uh, hop, like an inch, uh, not more. I mean, you give the, the 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 cuteness overload, like from here to here, man. It's like, oh my god, that was awesome. <laughs> it's Sorry about that. Uh, so again, let's move on to the next video. I know this one is a song. It's uh, now it's my time. I, I, I think I really uh, heard that song in the the episode of Princess Three Sparkle, but it was made for the anniversary of uh, Princess Trixie Sparkle. So yeah, I don't care. I just, I want I want to hear it. So. Yeah, I pick it by stab again. <laughs> no chicha times can heal the status with the own traitor one. <laughs> oh, yeah, I recognize that song. You know that I'm by far the best. Trixie the Great and Powerful. The greatest unicorn, <laughs> I'm magical. Uh, but no one really sees my gift. They laugh and they taunt and they criticize. Hmm. And I think I find my
<laughs> that oh man. I, I, like I said, I've, I've been following the Prince X Sparkle series, and uh, I've seen all all the improves, and the the difference is so freaking amazing. And when I, I've, I heard that song from the episode, it was not as polished as this one. That was awesome singing, and oh man. Oh, that was awesome. I loved it. So, so, so sorry to be short on the comments, but I still have a lot of, uh, I still have one, two, three, four, four, four of the videos and the last one start to uh, last 38 minutes. So uh, let's move on to the next video, which is another um, comic dub uh, called Apple Family Floats and apple bloom again kind of weird uh, a title but again doesn't really matter so let's say we start this video on three two one i told y'all i could do it it was a lot of hard work but i knew it could be done this here is the perfect size for the parade next week <laughs> What? The f huh? Huh? <laughs> That's what Hey Gramps, I always wondered, is your cutie mark invisible or something? Oh no, Apple Blue. I don't have one. Some ponies never discover their special talent. That's why I've had to spend my life shoveling dung. Oh! I don't want to shovel dung! Oh! Oh! That was adorable! <laughs> again, again, I was short, but man, the voice acting is, is giving so much life, man. It's so. I don't know. I, I love the my five pony uh, voice acting. It's so freaking cute. I mean, uh, I don't. I don't say that yet the others do a bad job. Everyone did a good job. But I, I don't know. It's just adorable. I love it. I love. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, my five pony, if you're watching this. You're doing a freaking good job to choose a free, uh, which uh, comic dub to do. To, to do. <laughs> so what? Uh, freaking awesome. So yeah, let's move on to the next video. Sorry to be sh again to be short on the comments, but hey, um, what can I say? I'm not really good to express myself with words in any way. So then let's move on to the next one called. Grandma is magic. Pinkie Pie and Rainbow Dash coming dub. So yeah, let's have to start this video on three, two, one. Hey, Rainbow Dash, we been looking for you. Wanna do something fun? Yay! Huh? Well, oh, it's you, Pinky. I'm just catching a few Z's. <laughs> I had an awesome Wonderbolt dream and I'm trying to get it back. Ooh, that sounds like a lot of fun! Mind if I join you? I don't think you can get into a dream. You may be crazy, but you're not gonna get into a dream. You're not Luna. Aw, oh, shoot! I do see right. I'll go see what Fluttershy is doing then. Oh, also, you spelled your wrong. <laughs> wait, wait! All right, thanks, Pinky. <sighs> Wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> exactly. Grammar is magic. Grammar is everything. The last sentence was kind of scary. <laughs> It, what was it, a little shy said in the um, uh, myst mystery? Uh, it's, it's new mayor sin. You mean 
who did it. No pony likes a grammar Nazi, Twilight. Yeah, right. But anyway, it doesn't matter. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, let, 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 let's move on to the uh, sixth one called the great and powerful Trixie song. Another uh, Trixie song, but um, yeah, uh, I don't mind it. So. I said it was a little Choice one. My team magical, great powerful tricks. Oh, my team magical, great powerful tricks. Oh, yeah. All the hype. Great powerful tricks. My team magical, great powerful tricks. Oh, I love the beat. Oh, the powerful you cannot hope to be. And for those who try, I surely will defeat. Pay attention, because I'm here to show I'm the best. Beat the rest, and you're sure to be impressed. See how easily it comes to me. You won't be clear corner. I did. You'll see all that I can do. My OC is there. All kinds of magic the that you never knew. Think you've got a chance when you stand up next to me? By the time I'm done, I'm gonna make you flee. Heads up, I'm okay, the man okay, that's gonna it. make a grand show. Stand in awe of all the things that I know. And my talent can only grow. I'm the best, beat the rest, and you're sure to be impressed. I can charm the wild out of any beast. I can control the weather in the north, south, west, and east. Yeah. Is there any doubt? Oh. Oh my god. Oh <laughs> the dark face. I love the limelight. It's such a highlight. And all you ponies out there wishing you could be like. You know you love it. <laughs> I do? Yeah, you know it. I'm the best. Don't have to look too far to find a great show. When you see my act, your mind's gonna blow. The great and powerful Trixie Mighty magical The great and powerful Trixie Now all my travels have led me here to you You're gonna know my name by the time I'm through No other pony can compare to my act I'm gonna stun you all And that is a fact huh. Oh yeah <laughs> Sorry Just <laughs> Man The four kids <laughs> So, 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 sorry, sorry, but what? What my was there? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm real honest. The freaking first time to see him, I was in the freaking videos. It's like, so it's like, holy crap! <laughs> I, I really try though to not let myself be um to lose focus of the song because. It was a really awesome song, really catchy, man. <laughs> I mean, again, they keep surprising me with the the singing, and I really love it. I really love how much they improve, and they have. It shows that they have a lot uh, of passion and fun in what they're doing. I mean, they almost give me a, a they make me want to sing. I mean. Yeah, let's simply move on to the last video. It's gonna last, uh, uh, last an half an hour. So yeah, I really have so much fun so, uh, so far. So I would not be surprised that it's gonna be a freaking awesome video. So Pinky Tails, Apple, Apple Jack, 
and the Beanstalk. Hmm. So, yeah. Don't know what to expect, so, like, be careful. Now. 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 there lived a poor farmer named Applejack. Although her name would lead you to believe that she harvested apples, it was a common misconception. Wait, wait, wait! <laughs> misconception is quite a big word. You could just say incorrect. That's a big word, too. Hmm. Mistake? <laughs> Thank you, Pinky. Applejack <laughs> and her mother, Mrs. Sparkle, were in fact cotton farmers. And as every pony knows, Clothing for ponies is an unnecessary luxury, especially in hard times like these. Therefore, they were suffering financially. Why don't you just say that they needed beds? That's what it means, Binky. <laughs> oh, carry on then. Times were so hard, in fact, that Mrs. Sparkle and her daughter only had one last thing to their name, a cow <laughs> named Rainbow <laughs> Bunny. <laughs> On the day that Mrs. Sparkle and her daughter had finished the last of their bread, she turned to her daughter and said, You must go into town and sell our cow for some bits, or we will surely starve. Our cow? You mean rainbow? <laughs> oh, no! Don't dawdle, Applejack, and don't stop for anything on your way, except no less than ten bits for her. So with Rainbow Vine in tow, Applejack made her way along the worn path towards town. <laughs> so is that all you can say then? Uh, moo? Well, howdy there, and hello to you, fellow traveler. A smooth-talking sales pony and his brother said, approaching Applejack with friendly yet somehow still sinister smiles. Hmm, let me guess. You're interested in the cow. Mighty fine beast you got there. If you're looking to sell, I'm sure we can take it off your hooves for, say, oh, five bits. Five bits? Aren't you supposed to be tricking me into selling her for some magic beans? <laughs> magic beans? One of the brothers said, okay, I then the turned to the other. Jack in the... okay, Why, yeah. of course we have ourselves some magic beans. Magic to its finest. The other brother agreed. Of course, these here are precious beans, and we wouldn't part with them for just anything. Do we gotta trade or what? Deal. <laughs> really? Straight to I the mean, point. No! Before another word could be said, the pair of ponies had vanished with Rainbow Vine, leaving poor foolish Applejack with three lousy and ordinary beans. They're supposed to be magic beans! Ah, uh, yes, of course, Pinky. Three lousy and magical beans. Yeah, whatever Better. beans are. <laughs> when Applejack proudly presented the beans to her mother, however, Mrs. Sparkle was far less than pleased. Beans? Beans? I sent you into town for bits, not beans! We cannot live on three beans, Applejack! What were you thinking? I'm just doing what's supposed to be done, and I know for a fact this story has the cow traded for beans. Worthless! <laughs> Mrs. Sparkle exclaimed, tossing the beans from her hoof into the dry, brittle yard just outside the window. Well, maybe you could use your alicorn magic to make them into magic beans. I don't know what you're talking about. There's no such thing as magic beans. End of story. Now off to bed with me. I will have to come up with another plan to get food in this house. What Mrs. Sparkle didn't know was that the beans she had unknowingly planted were in fact magical, and by the full moon's light, they took root in the hard soil and sprung up into a beanstalk that soared into the sky and pierced through clouds. 
classic. When morning finally came, Applejack and her mother gazed in awe at the beanstalk, letting their imaginations run wild with the possibilities of where it would lead. Hmm. Maybe Ash should climb it. Are you sure, Applejack? It looks rather dangerous. Dangerous? Nah, How is this dangerous? There's a spiral ramp conveniently wrapped around the beanstalk leading all the way up. Please be careful, my daughter. Mrs. Sparkle Aww. said, embracing Applejack one final time before Applejack began the climb. Honestly, the least these storytellers could do is write in a proper challenge. What, do they think I can't climb a beanstalk on my own? Applejack ranted just before she broke through the cloud cover. Well, that was fast. Applejack added, taking a look around, and discovered an entire world above the clouds that no pony would have ever dreamed. Wait, am I expected to walk on this here cloud? I'm still just an earth pony, you know. Yeah, Maybe that's right. <laughs> without Twilight's magic. Oh well. Applejack took a oh, wary step out of the cloud and found, much to her surprise, that it was firm as solid ground. She wandered away from the beanstalk and took note of the strange plants which seemed far larger than those back in Equestria. Even the blades of grass could tower over her in some places. After wandering for a few minutes, Applejack came upon a giant building and her eyes widened as she beheld it. A uh, bakery? It's uh, a giant <laughs> bakery. Gee, I wonder who could possibly live in a giant bakery in the sky. Still, she knew that bakeries had all manner of wonderful things to eat, and that perhaps this was the answer to all of her problems. Without so much as a knock, Applejack easily slipped under the giant bakery's door and craned her neck up to see shelves upon shelves of wonderful things to eat. There were pastries, creams, pies, cakes, awesome. donuts, and loaves of delicious bread for as far as she could see. The only problem was that each of these delectable goodies were too high to reach and too heavy to lift and bring back that, home. I it was While she go pondered the predicament, Applejack could hear a faint tooting sound coming from somewhere on the table nearby. She wandered closer, the sound becoming progressively louder as she did so. It reminded her of the sound of a tuba, intermingled with the sobs of a pony. Once she reached one of the legs of the table, she paused. Oh look! Another conveniently placed spiral ramp leading from the floor to the table. How totally unexpected. Applejack climbed the leg of the table, and once she reached the top, she saw an array of wonderful sugary things to eat. There were jellies as tall as buildings, and pies as wide as farmland cakes as deep as ravines, and all manner of candies scattered about in a chaotic fashion. She was so overtaken by the sight that she nearly forgot the reason she had climbed in the first place. It wasn't until she heard another loud and out of tune tuba toot that she continued her pursuit of the sound. When she turned the corner, Applejack saw what she believed was just a regular tuba slumped against really? a piece of blueberry pie. Oh my God, what she didn't realize was that the tuba itself was moving and sobbing as it made its off-key noises. Uh, everything all right there, miss? <laughs> oh, don't start at me like that, darling. I hate tooting in front of guests. Are... are you supposed to be a magical talking tuba? Yes. Oh, woe is me. <laughs> I thought you were supposed to be a harp. Isn't it a magical singing harp? A harp? Oh, I wish it were so, darling. Don't! But instead, I'm stuck in a dreadful tuba making all kinds of terrible don't noises. Oh, but where are my manners? Hello there, young traveler. I am Raritoot. Really? Yes, really. And I am dreadfully sorrowful. Well, go on. Ask me why I'm sorrowful. <laughs> why are you sorrowful? Because! I'm a captive in this dreadful place, forced to play music, party music, for the wicked giant's many parties. Don't! I would rather be playing classical pieces and telling as light as a lute. She's such a but no, awesome. I'm stuck playing such tunes as Every Pony Dance Now and the tuba rendition of the Macarena. 
Raritude cried, and with each sob, she let out another dreadful tooting sound. Applejack winced at the sound and covered her ears. At this point, she would say anything to make the awful noises stop. Well, uh, how's about I help you escape then? You, you would do that for me? Oh, how wonderful! We will become the best of friends, you and I. Perhaps you can learn to play the violin or the cello. And then we could perform concerts together and- Well now, wait just a minute. I said I'd help you escape. I never said you could come home with me. But I have nowhere else to go. Oh, do, do, do. <laughs> You simply must take me with you. I, uh, I don't know. I can surely make it worth your while, darling. And how really? is that? I know of a magical tree that the giant keeps, which bears fruit of the golden apple. Each one 24 carrots at least. They're mighty delicious, darling, if used the right way. <laughs> Though I suppose they could be sold for profit too if you so desired. <laughs> Golden apples! So that's why I've been led here. Show me the way, Rara Toot! Sure. And then I can come with you? Sure, sure, why not? I can shove the golden apples in my ears to drown out the tootin'. <laughs> oh, this is perfectly awesome, marvelous! <laughs> <laughs> Could you try not to do that, please? I'll do my best, darling, but I am a tuba after all. It's in my nature. <laughs> Follow me then. Oh, and don't eat any of the food for the drastic consequences. What kind of consequences? Let us hope you don't find out. Come along! <laughs> Applejack followed the after Rarity. <laughs> Her interests had certainly been piqued. Why would taking a bite of food be so wrong? She At first, it was an easier quest to follow, <laughs> but with each new delicious treat after another, they became more and more tempting. It seemed to Applejack that each new dessert was better than the last, and her stomach grumbled each time she avoided taking a bite. She hadn't mm. eaten since the day before, and even then it was a meager meal at best. Still, Applejack did as Raritude had advised until she caught sight of the most amazing dessert she had ever seen and smelled. Apple pie. What is that? <laughs> ah, it's a golden apple pie, of course. What is Made from the apples of the tree we are seeking. G golden apple. Applejack trailed off, her hooves unconsciously walking closer to it. Here we are, darling. The tree is just around the corner. Wait, what are you doing? Toot! Raritoot screamed with a loud toot of distress. Applejack had wandered over to the pie, her eyes transfixed on its golden filling. Her mouth watered, and her stomach grumbled loudly. And though she could hear Raritoot's annoying and loud warnings not to, She's Applejack so leaned funny. in and took a bite. It was the most amazing pie she had ever tasted and she buried her face into the pie for another bite. <laughs> Without missing a beat, the giant door burst open, scaring Applejack oh so God. much that she leaped into the golden pie to hide. Standing at the door with a large grin on her face was none other than Pinky the Giant. Pinky the Giant bounced from the door to the table, causing the room to quake as if the earth itself was moving. Raritoot screamed with a toot and ducked behind a large piece of cake while Applejack struggled to keep her hat on her head as the golden apple pie bounced up and down on the tabletop. Hmm, all clear here, Pinky the Giant said as she inspected a cupcake on the opposite end of the table. Nothing wrong here, or here. She examined each pastry, picking up one at a time, looking for any little missing pieces or nibbles. Applejack frantically poked her head out of the pie and looked for a new hiding place. She saw Raritoot giving her a nasty glare, and then she noticed the tree that she had been searching for. It was no more than 50 yards from the pie, with a yellow trunk and light pink leaves, and on each of the many branches hung a bright golden apple. Although the room was shaking with every bounce from the giant, Applejack could have sworn she saw the tree shaking in fear all on its own. Ah, my prized pie! Uh -oh. Pinky exclaimed, pulling the golden apple pie to her nose to smell. 
Applejack shouted, Whoa! Falling <laughs> splat back into the pie. Whoa! <laughs> My pie can talk? Pinky <laughs> cried, dropping the pie onto the table and causing many other desserts to fall over. Oh, say something else, oh magical deliciousness! Applejack <laughs> coughed and popped her head out of the pie, gasping for air before she met the gaze of the rather disappointed giant. Aww, so you're amazing. not a talking pie at all! You're just a pie thief! Pinky the giant said, reaching down with her hoof and scooping Applejack out of the pie. Applejack was barely able to grab her hat in time and cringed when she put its wet stickiness back on her head. Who are you? And what do you want with my desserts? You... don't know who I am, Pinky? Of course I don't, Applejack! This is the first time <laughs> I've ever seen you before! But you just said it doesn't matter anyway! Jack. You have defiled my greatest work, and now you must pay! Tuba! Yes, this giant! Play me a tune! An old western kind of tune! Being this pony in a hat gives me a great idea! <laughs> Before Applejack could wonder what Pinky the Giant could possibly be planning, she found herself in another oh corner God. of the bakery where a collection of pony-sized toys strewn about the countertop. Aww. Within a flash, Applejack was redressed in cow pony boots, a white hat, and a vest where a cheap but golden sheriff star was pinned. <laughs> like, While Applejack uh, tried to on. figure out how she could be dressed so quickly, Pinky the Giant had set up an entire old western scene complete with shops, desert sand, and an old railroad track. Poor What's this here setup all about? Applejack asked, attempting to take her hat off. Of course, Pinky the Giant was having none of that. She readjusted the hat on Applejack's head. She picked up a little purple alicorn toy dressed in a similar designed black outfit and a crudely drawn black mustache. Ha <laughs> ha ha! We meet again, Sherry Applebottom! You can never stop me or my nip 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 Evil plan! Are we really doing this, Pinky? Quiet! Don't you want to know what my plan is? <laughs> what nefarious plan have you concocted, Pinky? Pinky? Who is this Pinky? I am Midnight Moonshine, the unwanted outlaw. <laughs> Moonshine? You do realize that's another name for- Ah! Help me, Sheriff Applebottom! Pinky said, speaking for a different toy on the playset. This was a white unicorn mare with a deep purple mane that was tied crudely to the train track with a piece of giant yarn. Ha ha ha! Save her if you can, Applebottom! And while you do, I will rob the cookie bank! No pony can stop me! <laughs> Applejack man. looked from Pinky to the toys that were roughly her size. I, know so I don't much have time for acting, this. Man. Pinky lowered her head and rested it on the table, looking Applejack in the eye, glaring darkly. What did you say? I said... Uh... Fret not, miss! Rarity! Oh, so we're not changing her name then? Eh, uh, nothing else fit right. <laughs> From across the way, Raritoot made an unimpressed tooting sound. Toot. <laughs> Rarity then! I shall save you! Applejack sauntered towards the Rarity doll. It too was dressed for the part, wearing a red frilly gown and a hat that she was sure that real Rarity would never dare to wear. She bit down on the yarn and pulled, wondering what the catch was. Nice. That was, of course, when Applejack caught sight of a toy train heading her way. Hurry, Miss Applebottom! Really? Hurry! 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 Come on! Yes, darn it, I'm doing my best! <laughs> Pinky screamed in place of the Rarity doll, just as Applejack pulled it free. The toy train sped by and straight off the counter, landing with a crash on the unforgiving ground below. This did not seem to deter Pinky as she cheered for the doll. Oh, Apple Bottom, you're my hero! I sure am, Pink. <laughs> Rarity, are we, uh, done now? Done? We've only just begun! Pinky the Giant exclaimed, 
motioning to the cupboard behind her to show Applejack the many hundreds of outfits and playsets she had stored away for playtime. The pit of Applejack's stomach dropped, and her eyes widened, imagining the horrors that were to come. Yeah, I can imagine. Do you have to take an teensy-weensy break to finish baking all the goodies for the party? Giant Gummy's cake must be perfect! Pinky the Giant said, swooping Applejack up with one swipe of her hoof. She hummed merrily to herself as she placed Applejack on the shelf in the play cupboard, as if she were now one of the many toys Pinky had collected. As Pinky closed the cupboard door, Applejack quickly pushed her hat in the way of the lock. Pinky the Giant turned the key and bounced away, assuming that she had successfully locked Applejack inside. From the table below, Rarity caught sight of Applejack's trick and intended to use her music to aid in her escape. She turned her attention to Pinky the Giant, tooting as she hobbled towards her. <laughs> Might I play you a tune while you cook your delicacies? Oh, a happy working song? <sighs> no, Pinky. Disney claimed the rights to that one. Again, baby. something soothing. Raritu offered, trying her best to play a tune to lull the giant to sleep, a hard task to do when you're a tuba. Of course, as it is with these sorts of fairy tales, Pinky the Giant was helpless to Raritu's song. She set down her giant baking sheet of cookies and rested her head on the table. After a few oh, minutes of so silence, cute. Applejack could hear her soft snores. She struggled a little at first to pull her hat free, then bucked the wood of the door to open it. Being careful not to make a sound, Applejack leapt from the cupboard and onto the countertop securing her hat back onto her head. She looked to the door and almost ran to safety when she remembered the delicious golden apples. She thought perhaps oh, no. if the giant slept long enough, she could take the tree for herself. Whoa, 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 hang on a sec. Applejack wouldn't steal. Pinky, you're supposed to be asleep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Applejack crept along the countertop, hopping from saucepan to baking sheet, making her way back towards the table. At long last, <laughs> she reached the golden apple tree, <laughs> marveling at the delicious fruit that it grew. Maybe I could have just one, Applejack said turning around to buck the bark of the tree and cause an apple to fall. Oh, um, if you don't mind, I would rather you didn't do that. What are Shaft? Are you... are you a tree? <laughs> um, who is Fluttershy? Aren't you... well, then who are you? I'm Flutter Tree. Of course. <laughs> of course you're called Flutter Tree. Alright, I'll play along. <clears throat> Flutter Tree, <clears throat> would you be so kind as to allow me to take you home with me? Oh, I don't know. That's not very nice. I mean, Aww. I don't really like it here, but it would be so sad if the giant woke up and her tree was missing. What does <sighs> Flutter Tree want? Well, will there be little animals where you live? I live on a farm. Little critters are always wandering about. Oh, like little pigs and cows and chickens? Maybe oh, some birds and squirrels? Mm, something like that. So, what do you say? Oh, alright. I'll come with you. <laughs> but, how do you expect to carry me away all on your own? I figured I'd use the conveniently placed wagon about ten feet from where I'm standing. Applejack said, tilting her head to the side to indicate to the little red wagon waiting behind Flutter Tree. I guess all them ramps make sense now. Can't wheel you out of here without them. Applejack pushed Flutter Tree towards the wagon, and then used every ounce of her strength to lift it into place. As she strained and groaned under the weight of the tree, one of the golden apples shook loose and plopped right onto her head. Oh, I'm so sorry. Applejack merely shook her head and picked up the apple that had fallen. She rubbed it on her vest before taking a mouth-watering bite. Mm -mm. We're gonna be the talk of the town once I get these here apples home. No pony will be able to resist them, and our money troubles will be over. Applejack declared, finishing the apple with a satisfied smirk. She took the handle of the wagon in her mouth and carefully pulled it along the tabletop 
as far from the sleeping giant as she could. From the corner of her eye, Raritoot could see Applejack and Fluttertree nearing the edge of the table, where the ramp around the leg would take them safely down. She gasped in horror, <gasps> thinking that Applejack had forgotten her promise to take her along. She hurried across the table towards them, each hop making a toot sound. The more frantically she hopped, the louder and off-key the toots became. Oh, come on. Shh! Shh! Can't you keep that racket down? You forgot me? Toot! Oh. After all I'd done for you, and you were just going to leave me here? Shh! I was not! I was going to get this here tree to the floor first and then come back for you, I swear! A likely story! Toot! You just didn't want to go with me in the first place! Why would you want a useless, ugly old tuba lying around the house? Toot! Please, Rabbit Toot, you have to keep it down! The giant your feet's always about that silly old tree, isn't it? Toot! Oh, these apples are so delicious! What an amazing tree! You're such a magical wonder! I bet it's the rarest fruit ever grown! Rarer Toot! No! Rarer Toot shouted, letting out a loud toot as she did so. Applejack put a hoof to her face, and closed her eyes as she heard the unwelcome sound of the giant waking up. Oh my gosh, thanks, Rory. I mean, what's going on here? Hey, what is my chupa? My golden apple tree? Run! Applejack shouted, wheeling Flutter Tree down the leg of the table and towards the door. Wait for me! Raritoot objected, bumping into a large cupcake as she pursued Applejack. The cupcake teetered on the edge of the table before landing with a splat mere inches from Flutter Tree. Applejack smeared some of the splattered frosting from her face with disdain before continuing towards the opened door. I left the door open? Yes, Pinky. It's called a plot device. Well, that wasn't very smart of me. Applejack might get away with my stuff. That's the point, Pinky. <laughs> oh. Continue. Pinky the Giant listened for the toots of her tuba until she spotted them making an exit. She growled and raced for the door ahead of them. Before she could make it, however, Pinky stepped down on the fallen cupcake and slid from one end of the room to the other, colliding into a wall. Oh, poor Pinky. Uh, I'm okay. I'm okay. Applejack, Raritoot, and Fluttertree <laughs> made their way outside towards the beanstalk. Pinky the Giant was on their tail, and Raritoot screamed a toot so loudly in panic that Applejack's ears went flat against her head. Could you stop that? We're trying to make our escape here! Get back here, thief! Even if it is uncharacteristic that you would be stealing anything, we're going to ignore that for story purposes! Pinky the Giant shouted after them. Applejack bucked Raritude up into the wagon, Ow! alongside Flutter Tree, then got behind the wagon and pushed it. What are you well, doing? Well, didn't do that Hang from on, the very Mistuba. beginning. We're in for a ride. Applejack said, pushing the wagon onto the beanstalk and then hopping into it herself. With a loud, Yee-haw! The Yee three of them rolled down the beanstalk ramp, Raritude screaming the entire way down. <laughs> Mrs. Sparkle had waited half the day for her daughter to return. Ow. She looked up at the beanstalk curiously when she heard a strange sound of a screaming tuba. Much to her surprise, Applejack and her two new companions rolled off the beanstalk, missing the house to land in the dead cotton fields. Twala! The axe! Quick! From the clouds above, Pinky the Giant waited at the top of the beanstalk and watched Applejack make her descent. Hold on. Why are you waiting, Pinky? Shouldn't you be pursuing them? Oh, that would be silly. I'm a giant and I could have caught up to them in two bounces. Not to mention I could climb down much faster than a rolling wagon before she even had a chance to find an axe. So you're just going to wait here for her? Yep. It's a pretty big plot hole in the original story, if you ask me. Once Applejack's axe began chipping away at the beanstalk, Pinky the Giant resumed her chase sliding down the beanstalk like it was a fire pony pole. <laughs> Before she could reach the ground, however, Applejack's axe had cut clean into the beanstalk and the entire plant toppled to the ground.
<laughs> Pinky the Giant was a few feet from the ground when she suddenly stopped in midair and righted herself, landing softly on her hooves. I'm like the cat! Oh, oh he's landing on my paws! Uh, hooves! <laughs> Except you slipped on a cupcake two minutes ago. We don't talk about that! Once on the ground, Pinky the Giant spotted the only living creature in sight. It was a brightly colored cow with rainbow hair. She shook on her hooves when she looked up at the giant, too shocked to run. Oh my goodness! It's a rainbow vine! I bet I can get her to milk me rainbow milk too! And I can make rainbow, rainbow butter, milk. rainbow cake, rainbow pudding! Pinky the giant leaned down and swooped up the cow. Uh, who needs some crummy old golden apples anyway? This is so much better! Pinky the Giant grabbed a tuff of cloud passing by and fashioned it into a flight of stairs. She hummed a merry tune to herself as she bounced back up to her home in the sky, drowning out the frantic mooing of Rainbow Vine as she went. Moo! 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 <laughs> Meanwhile, Applejack and her mother delighted in their new flutter tree, picking the golden apples that would magically appear once the fruit had been picked. With the seeds from the apples, they replanted their dead field until an entire orchard of flutter trees sprang up from the ground. Hey. Oh, I'm so sorry. Did I hit your branch? Oh. Pardon me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Would you take a few hops to the left, please? I'm sorry. You're resting on my roots. Oh, my bad. Oh, Best look, forest little ever. Where? Oh, these animals are so cute. Oh, he's so cute. Could you um, move a little? Oh, it's oh he's so adorable. So adorable. Exactly! Raritoot spent her time playing songs for Applejack and Mrs. Sparkle as they harvested their new crop, whether they liked it or not. And with the money they earned making golden apple products, they were finally able to pay off their debts and live a comfortable life. The Yay. end! Good night, Pound! Good night, Aww. pumpkin. Sweet dreams, my little ponies. And a good night to you too out there. Hope to see you next time for some more pinky tails. <laughs> oh. That was so freaking awesome, man. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs>
<laughs> of, of the, the, the story and stuff, but that deserved a freaking animation. I'm sorry, but that deserved an animation. What's I want to say? That was awesome. I loved it. So, yeah, I, I really don't know what to say more than this, so... I really hope you guys enjoyed this as I did. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.